Hello, today I want to talk you through the Stitch in Time Embroidery Flower Stamp Set. Now this is one of my favourite stamp sets of um, all of the textures range so far because this is the one that I've had in my mind for so many years and uh, finally to see it come to life and be able to actually use it in my crafting is amazing. Um, so there's a couple of different ways that you can use these to get the look of embroidery or hand stitching. So I'm going to show you both ways on one project quickly. Um, let, let's first of all have a look at the stamp set. So what we've got is duplicates of each of the designs here. Now obviously mine is very used, some of the stamps are on top of the images and some underneath while I'm using it but um, you can see we've got pairs of designs here now within each pair we've got a solid image and then more of an outline or sketchy image the idea is that you're going to lay down your base colour and then stamp over the top in a darker colour and this uh, sketchy line drawing image or shape for each design is going to add in what would be the shading if you were doing embroidery you'd have the lines of shadows between each of the threads so it looks like real embroidery. So I'm going to show you that way first, but you can also stamp just with the uh, sketchy line designs as well. If you want more of a broken embroidery or a looser, uh, not quite so full stitched look, so more like a hand stitched look there. So I'm going to show you both designs. Now my favourite inks for doing this with are uh, chalk inks and distress oxides. Um, they hold their colour really well. You can layer up the colours very well as well. You get a really nice creamy texture to them and lots of coverage. The uh, colours are always very vivid and very bold. We're not worrying about blending here, we're just looking for nice solid vivid colours and detail. Um, what I tend to do is I take, choose my colours before I start a project um, and I've got lots and lots of colours of these ink pads and I like to pair them up where I can so I take a lighter and a darker shade of two colours so I've got a couple of greens here I've got a couple of purpley colours there each with a light and a dark I've got a teal here and then some of my favourite colours to just do embroidery with and these are not a pair but for single stamping single layer stamping I love these two colours as well and then I've got all of my options Options of my distress oxides here also in case I want to use those just for variation uh, now I tend to start with the florals and then do the foliage mostly afterwards so let's start first of all with this large flower at the top one of the largest that we've got here so I'm going to peel off the uh, solid stamp here and I prefer not to use a, um, a stamping platform I prefer to do it by eye because you'll need to move the stamp around to fit the first layer so for this reason I find just an acrylic block is much easier so let's go with this teal so I'm going to lay down my first layer which is a pale teal color and this is using a it's like a memento a cat or some people call them cat's eyes or versa magic there's a few different names for these stamps here but it's a creamy chalky consistency takes a bit longer to dry but that's fine and I, I've got down here I've masked off an area uh, in an S shape so I'm going to keep that stuck down with a little bit of stencil glue and I'm going to stamp directly over the top now my masking there for those who are wondering is done with uh, just copy paper uh, that way I do get um, no sort of ridges to have to stamp over so there's the first design now I'm going to take a wet wipe and I'm just going to clean this if you have a particular stamp cleaner you can use that but because I'm always using different colours I like to clean them straight away then I'm going to take the next layer from this design and this is the one that has more detail in it uh, I'm going to pop this before I actually put it on my block I'm going to have a look because it's not a perfectly symmetrical design what you'll need to do is just have a look around and see if you can position your stamp over your your previously stamped image there in the right place you may need to rotate it a few times to get that correctly and then I say it's a good idea to then hold your stamp block at a right angle and pick your stamp up so you know once you've inked that all you need to do is flip it over and it will be the right position. So I'm now going to take my darker shade of the two that I've chosen. So this is a darker teal colour and with this one I prefer not to add too much ink. So I want a nice even coverage but I don't want to squelch it into the and make it really sort of run into the detail of the stamp there. 
So again I'm going to flip that over as I just talked about and I'm just going to reposition this stamp. Now this is where I usually prefer to bring my head over the top of my stamp and make sure I am seeing exactly where I'm going uh, but you don't need to see that so I'll do it from an angle just press that down again and there we go so then we've got like an embroidery stroke stitched look now we can also do this uh, just with the stitched stamp so let's have a look at one of those I've got a nice one here this is one of my favorites to do without um, the base colour on. So this is on the stamp set, this one here. Okay, so just the line. So I'm going to take this dusky rose colour. I really like this colour particularly for this stamp. And I'm going to come over and stamp this just here. So this is without the base colour. This is a much quicker way of creating these embroidery flowers but as you can see you've got all the gaps in there so it looks as if you've just done some hand stitching uh, so I'm going to work my way around with these with these stamps uh, covering this S entirely and then we'll reveal to have a look at the finished result Now I've built up my flowers and I have done some overlapping and that's absolutely fine because of course in embroidery you design it so some flowers would look as if they're overlapping. Uh, I'm now going to go in with my um, foliage. So what I do like to do is with the foliage is do the longer pieces first and work down to the smaller pieces. So I want my entire design to look as if it's flowing from this top corner down to the bottom. I've already got one piece of foliage here so I need another piece to come out this way. And I've got this long stem, um, but you don't have to, of course, stamp the entire piece. I think if I just lay this over and have a look, I think I just need to do the first four leaves there on this stem. So I'm just going to ink those four, first four pieces roughly in my lighter green and stamp those coming out from these flowers here. give that a wipe and then repeat that with the stitch to the more scribbled lines as such. And the first four leaves because they will lay over absolutely perfectly just here. There we go so we're starting to see that shape coming from the bottom uh, top corner down to the bottom. So now I'm going to go in with some smaller leaves. I've actually got three uh, variations of leaves here. So we've got the long thin ones that we were just doing. We've got the little ones. These are probably my favourite because they're little filler stamps. And then we've got the large sort of fern like fern looking leaves as such. Um, so with the these green leaves I'm going to do these in a variation of colours again. I think I'm going to stick with the same greens I did the longer leaves with and to make this quicker and easier what I tend to like to do is just go around and stamp all the bases of my leaves first and then afterwards go in with the uh, outer colour or the darker colour the shading there so this one's going to have another leaf just here to bring that out and of course with this perfect shading isn't a necessity because you're going to be adding another layer over the top so it's fine if it's not absolutely perfect. Filling in any gaps so the entire thing looks um, looks as if it's sort of a round, almost round shape. And you can of course part stamp so I'm just going to just ink the top half of my um, of my leaf there. I might do a little bit more than half there and stamp that one there at the top and then again do very similar at the bottom here and this can come out there. So then taking my darker colour and I'm now going to go over all of those designs with the shading, the texture for the embroidery stamp here as well. So a darker green, this one is a Versa Magic and it's Spanish Olive. 
just over the top and you see how that really brings it to life it just adds in all of the shading and texture of what would be the threads if this was actual embroidery stamping and by using a nice dark colour as well um, we can go directly over other stamping and make it really look like layered threads there so now just moving on to my part stamps so I've got one here another half at the bottom here and then one more just here just looking to make sure I line that up as much as possible great okay so now we can do the reveal so all I'm going to do is take a pokey tool and I'm going to gently lift up Yes, so this was stuck down with a stencil glue but any low tack tape or something that um, you would use as a repositionable glue will work if you've just stamped all of this your S or your letter that you've chosen may be a little bit damp the paper may be damp from all the ink but as you can see there we've then got that um, beautiful negative S embroidery um, or embroidery look I absolutely love that and of course that will then fit perfectly within uh, your embroidery hoops because this original circle was cut from the embroidery hoops die set so lastly before I finish I just want to show you um, a few examples of each of the stamp sets so I've got a board here so this is the largest floral and as you can see you can stamp either on their own or you can layer them up with two various colors you can do the same with this one this is a smaller version of the one at the top and then we've got like the knotted rose as well which works really well if you've got a lovely dark color on top and then for the foliage we have that small what I call a worker leaf there uh, just fits in all the little gaps that you've got little spaces we've got the long thin one and then we've got the wider fern as well each of them all layered up to look like embroidery